In this mini lecture, we're going to do an example of a full state feedback design. So let's go ahead and consider our system of a mass on a, on a frictionless bearing attached to a spring and a damp damper with coefficients k and b. Assuming we can apply a force in a positive direction uh, and that we would also measure the position and the velocity of that mass cart. We know that the equations of motion for this system end up being mx double dot is equal to minus kx minus b times x dot and that and then add in the force f that we're applying. We again let f equal the um, spring coefficient times some displacement command. And we know that after all is said and done, we end up with x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n squared x is equal to omega n squared times u of t. The, this, of course, this term is b over m, and this term here is k over m, natural frequency and the damping ratio. First, we're going to put into state space form. So we say let x1 equal x and x2 equal x dot. Therefore, we can write down that x1 dot is equal to x dot is equal to x2. And x2 dot is equal to x double dot, which is equal to minus 2 zeta omega n x dot, which is just x1, I'm sorry, x2, then minus omega n squared times x, which is x1, and plus omega n squared times u of t. Now we can go ahead and write down our state vector. So we define x as being x and x dot, which is defined as x1 and x2. And we now take a derivative. So we have x dot is equal to x1 dot and x2 dot. And we've already written down up here what those relationships are. So I would have close out my state matrix, and that's times x1 and x2, the state vector. And so x1 dot we see is just x2, so I have 0 and 1. And then x2 dot, I have minus omega n squared times x1, and which comes from here, and then minus 2 zeta omega n. And then we have to add in the input to the system, so I have 0 and omega n squared all times u of t. And in this case, we see that the state matrix is given here. That's A. Here's the input matrix to the system. And finally, we have that y is just equal to x. Say, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to measure all the states. So we're going to measure x and x dot, which is just x1 and x2. So we're measuring these independently as in two separate measurements. And so that's going to be equal to the identity matrix times the state vector plus 0 times the input. So our output matrix, C, is the identity. And the feed-through matrix, D, is equal to 0. We have our system in state space form. We go ahead and recognize that this system consists of a reference input. And that input then is fed into the plant, which is x dot equals ax plus bu. And here y is just equal to x. So we have x coming out. And we're going to take x and feed it back through a gain k, which we have to determine yet, which then is subtracted from the reference input to generate the error, uh, which in this case is actually fed in as the input to the system. Writing this all out, <clears throat> we see that x dot is equal to ax plus bu, but u is equal to ur minus k times x. So upon substitution, we have x dot is equal to ax plus b times ur minus kx. Multiplying out and collecting terms, I end up with a minus b k times x plus b times ur. 
and still we also have y is equal to x. So this is the closed loop state space representation of our system. And now to understand the stability of our system, we need to understand what a, the eigenvalues of a minus bk. We can check to see is a b controllable. And if it is, we can arbitrarily place the eigenvalues by picking the right value of k. We, we find the controllability matrix. Uh, we can do this in MATLAB using the rank of CTRB passing A and B. And this ends up giving us 2, which is full. So the system is controllable. Therefore, we can pick eigen, uh, arbitrary eigenvalues for the closed loop system by picking K. And essentially what this means is that we'll be able to use the MATLAB place command to solve for the gains that we want. So first, let's go ahead and um, pick some eigenvalues. So we're going to pick some eigenvalues. And we're going to do this based on uh, performance. So I'm going to, so let's pick the following. Let's pick a settling time of less than or equal to one second. Let's pick a max overshoot uh, less than or equal to 0.1 or 10%. And let's pick a rise time, which is going to be less than or equal to 0.5 seconds. We can go ahead and calculate then what the appropriate uh, natural frequency and damping ratio for the closed loop system would be using our rules of thumb. TS is equal to 4.2 over zeta omega n. And I'm going to use this bar notation to indicate these are the damping ratio and natural frequencies that we want. It has to be less than 1. Therefore, zeta bar omega n bar has to be greater than 4.2 or equal to. And the rise time is approximately 1.8 over omega n bar, which has to be less than or equal to 0 0.5 which means that omega n needs to be greater than or equal to, sorry, omega n bar needs to be greater than or equal to 3.6. And finally, mp has to be, is given by e to the minus pi times zeta bar divided by the square root of 1 minus zeta bar squared. And then that gives us that zeta bar has to be greater than or equal to 0 0.5912. We can visualize this by plotting, say, the natural frequency and the damping ratio required on a uh, Cartesian grid. And we see that zeta has to be greater than uh, 0.59. So we can say, OK, here's 0 0.5912. So this area is not in the design space. And then uh, omega n has to be greater than 3.6. So if this were, say, 3.6 right there, then anything below that is not in the design space. And finally, this requirement here relates zeta n and, and omega. And that's going to be some function that maybe comes down like this. And so then anything down here wouldn't be in the design space. So the particulars of where we end up in our design space uh, will depend on, uh, on these values. But we're up in here somewhere as our design space. So anything, any values that I pick of zeta and omega n that are up here will achieve these uh, performance requirements. So let's use the following. Let's let zeta bar be equal to 0 0.7. So that gives us a little margin. And then let's let that for, well, this is not letting. This requires then that omega n has to be greater than or equal to 4.2 over 0.7, which is equal to 6. And that's in radians, radians per second. So that means that we need poles at uh, p1 and 2 equal to minus zeta bar omega n bar plus or minus j times omega n bar times the square root of 1 minus zeta bar squared, which gives us, after we multiply everything out, 4.2 plus or minus j 
times 4.2849. Now, we need to pick some values for the damping, then uh, the spring coefficient and the damping coefficient in the problem and a mass. So just for the sake of simplicity, let's let k equal b equal m equal 1. With these values of the spring coefficient, the damping rate the coefficient, and the mass, we end up with 2 zeta omega n, which is b over m, is equal to 1. And omega n squared, which is equal to k over m, is equal to 1. So our A matrix ends up being 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1. And our B matrix ends up being 0, 1. So we can use now the place command in MATLAB and pass in the A and the B matrix along with the desired poles. So the commands we're going to run are going to be K is equal to place of A and B. And then we're going to pass in P1 and P2 in a vector, where P1 and P2 are, are given by this calculation. So let's go ahead and switch over to MATLAB and see if we're going to meet our requirements with this design. All right, so we're now in MATLAB, and we're going to go ahead and run through these commands. First, we'll define the A matrix as 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1, and B is equal to 0, 1. Uh, prime, so it's transposed. C is equal to the identity, uh, 2 by 2 identity, and then D would be equal to 0, 0, transpose. We can certainly define this system as a state space object to pass in A, B, C, and D, and, excuse me, SS. And we could look at the response to this system by using the step command, and this is, so this would be the open loop response of the system. And notice what the step response, what this step command gives us is the position and the velocity of the system over time. So it's as if we're measuring both position and velocity. So that's the open loop. And we see that open loop, we, if we put the uh, performance uh, characteristics on there, and let's see, our peak response, our rise time, and uh, Peak response, we see that we, we don't meet our performance criteria uh, open loop. So if we want to go ahead and, and then uh, find some gains to meet our performance criteria, we can go ahead and do that. We define what our poles needed to be. So we know that P needs to be, P1 has to be uh, minus 4.2, uh, say, plus 4.2. 849 times j, and then p2 needs to be the, the same thing, minus 4.2, but then minus 4.2849 times j. And then we can find k using the place command, pass a, b, and then in a vector, pass p1 and p2, and there's our gain k that we need. And we can check this <clears throat> by defining a system uh, closed loop system state, state space object using a minus b times k b c and d and there's our closed loop and now when we type step of syscl we get the following step response and we see that if we get our peak response we have less than 10 percent overshoot if we look at our settling time, it's now uh, just less than one second. And if we look at our rise time, we see it is going to be just significantly below half a second. So we've met our performance criteria. Notice one interesting thing that's happened is I've, I've reduced the total amount of gain in the system. In other words, the final value for this system is about uh, 0 0.275 instead of before it was about 1. How do we recover the gain in the system? Well, what we actually need to do is add a gain to the uh, reference input uh, before the sum junction. Okay, and this is equivalent to essentially increasing the step size. So I can do this in a, in a couple of different ways, uh, but if I, I don't want to completely change B because it's not the input to the plant, so we can use the step info 
uh, command to change the step imp uh, amplitude to 1 divided by 0 0.0275, approximately what we're looking at, uh, which would give me a new uh, input size of 36.36. And so now if I run the step system of the, on the closed loop system and I pass in the options that I've just defined, I should get a step response that is the same shape, has the same uh, performance characteristics as far as max overshoot and uh, settling time and rise time that we've been looking for. But notice the final value is closer to 1. I could calculate the exact uh, gain needed by looking at appealing to the final value theorem and seeing exactly what the uh, final value is for this system uh, before I added this, this other gain. This is known as loop gain recovery.